Good morning. Today we will study more about Jeremiah chapter 36 to chapter 37 verse 4. Before we study God's word, we will pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence with us. We don't know how long this pandemic will last, but we are confident that you are watching over us all the time. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your word to teach and to guide us how to live the right way. That your name be honored in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible is the most important book ever written because God wrote it. He wrote the Ten Commandments with his own fingers on two tablets of stone. The Bible was written over a period of 1,600 years by about 40 men. God told them what to write. Satan has tried so many ways using wicked men to get rid of the Bible, to destroy all copies of the Bible, even up to the present time. But Satan can never succeed. God is the author. He will never let his word be destroyed. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Your word O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. It means God's word is forever and unchangeable. Let's read our Bible verse two times. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Psalm 119 verse 89. This morning we will learn how King Jehoiakim tried to destroy God's word. Jehoiakim was a very wicked king. He led the Israelites to worship all kinds of idols and commit all kinds of sins. Jeremiah warned him. God will punish you and all the people if you keep on sinning. But King Jehoiakim would not listen to him. One day, God said to Jeremiah, write on a scroll all the words that I have told you about Israel, Judah, and other nations. Maybe they will repent when they hear of the troubles I will bring on them. If they do, I will forgive them. So Jeremiah sent for Barak, his secretary. Jeremiah dictated God's words. Barak wrote them on a scroll. Finally, it was done after many long hours of work. Jeremiah then told Barak, I I am not allowed to go to the temple now. You go and read the words of God to the people. Barak went right away to the temple and read all the messages to the people. When the young scribe, Micaiah, grandson of Shephan, heard the words of God, he thought others must hear these wonderful words. Then he hurried to the palace and found the leaders of the king sitting together in a room. One of them was his father, Jeremiah. Micaiah told them about the words of God he had heard from Barak in the house of God. The leaders wanted to hear too. They must have been quite excited, for they sent a messenger to get Barak and the scroll right away. When Barak came, Barak began to read God's words to them. When they heard it all, 
They were frightened, and they looked at each other. Never had they heard anything like that about God punishing sins. Probably, they were thinking of the sinful things they had done, such as lying, cheating, stealing, bragging. And etc. Then they said, "We have to tell the king about this." And they asked Barak, "Tell us, how did you come to write all these messages? Did Jeremiah dictate them to you?" Barak answered, "Yes, Jeremiah dictated them to me, word by word." And I wrote them in the scroll. Then the leader said to Barak, "Go and hide. You and Jeremiah don't let anyone know where you are." The leaders then kept the scroll in the room. They went to the king, who was sitting near the fireplace. For it was winter time. The leaders told the king about the words of God. The king demanded, "Who told you all this?" When they told the king everything, and that the words of God were written on a scroll, he sent his servant to get the scroll. The servant came back with the scroll. And he began to read. The king, and all the people that were with him, listened. But as soon as a servant finished reading a part from the scroll, the king grabbed the scroll and cut off the part that had been read with a knife and threw it into the fireplace. Angrily, three of the leaders tried to stop the king. They pleaded with him, for they knew it was wrong to burn the word of God. But the king would not listen to them. He kept right on until the whole scroll was burned. The king and his servants were not afraid at all of what they were doing. What sinful hearts they had! Then the king ordered arrest Jeremiah and Barak. The king's men went out right away. They hunted everywhere, but they could not find the two men. There was no trace of Jeremiah and Barak. Where did they hide? No one knows. God hid them. In a very perfect hiding place, and God was with them. Now, how about God's word written in the scroll? Does it mean it has been lost forever, for it was all burned? No, God told Jeremiah, "Get another scroll and write everything again, just as you did before." And there are more words to be added. God told Jeremiah what would happen to the king for his sins and for burning the scroll. For the king had been warned, and he was not sorry at all. God had to punish him. Everything God said came true. King Jehoiakim was captured by the enemy. And was killed, but Jeremiah, who had been faithful to God, was free to live among his people. King Jehoiakim was not a wise king. He did not love and worship the true God. He thought that his country could avoid God's judgment just by cutting and burning the scroll, which was Jeremiah's. Prophecies always remember. Number one, God is the author of the Bible. Every word that God says is true and lasts forever. No one can destroy it. 
just by burning it in the fire or any other way or by rejecting it or making fun at what the Bible teaches. It is the most trusted guide for our living. We can have confidence in the message it contains. When we believe and agree with God's word, we won't go wrong. If we truly love God, then we ought to read God's word every day. Read it, learn it, and practice it every day. Then we will never forget it. Number two, ask God to help us to be like Jeremiah. Always love and obey God. Always be faithful and be humble. And always be tender-hearted, yet courageous. Let's pray. Thank you, O Lord. Your word is true, and we can always rely on it. Thank you. We can always talk to you through our prayers. And we can listen when you talk to us through your word, the Bible. Thank you for your love never changes and never ends. Your love is everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen.